Good morning. Welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church. Uh, we are here together to praise the Lord and uh, join with you on praise on this uh, Lord's Day. Uh, Alex Becker, uh, pastor, is with us. Jen Langlois, director of Family Educational Ministries, and myself, Pastor Jim. And so we rejoice in this day and want to share uh, some information in terms of our spiritual health and development as well. Uh, in terms of medical health, we won't be commenting. Make sure you call your doctor, follow CDC and local government. But in terms of spiritual health, we have a rich history of thousands of years of guidance from God through the people of God. And I'd like to follow up with a verse that we shared last week from Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Find joy. The Lord is dear. Do not worry about anything. That's a challenging task. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? In everything, by prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving. Make our requests known to God. And here's the promise. If we pray, God's peace will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. One of the questions after last week was, Jim, do you have a good prayer book? Uh, I don't have a good prayer book at home. I want to tell you, you probably do. The best <laughs> prayer book in the world is contained in the Bible, and most of you have Bibles with you. If you open to the very middle of the Bible, it opens to the Psalms. The Psalms are a collection of 150 prayers by people like you and me. It's conversation with God, it's real, it's authentic, at times it's quite visceral and raw, but it's holistic in that we bring ourselves before God in our joys and in our sorrows and challenges and despair. So I just wanted to share a few examples with you. Uh, Psalm 145, the Psalms at the end of, of this book are filled with praise. Uh, praise you, God. I will extol you. You are my God, my King. You are gracious and merciful. Uh, you're good to all. Your compassion is over all. And my mouth, our mouth, will speak the praise of the Lord. All flesh, all people around the world will bless God's holy name. Beautiful ways to start the day with praising God, uh, especially if you wake up uh, with your coffee and, and see a beautiful sunrise, giving thanks to God for the glorious day. Now, there are also psalms that um, allow us to come before God when we're feeling totally alone and isolated, and our hearts are heavy. Psalm 13, easy number to remember, very powerful. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? There are times we feel all alone. And maybe you're sitting at home alone right now. And where's God in my life? How long must I bear pain in my soul, have sorrow in my heart all day long? Powerful words. And maybe there are times when you feel that way, that, that their burdens are just too heavy and you can't carry them. Well, the Psalms are having us bring our burdens directly to God. They speak for us. And at the end of Psalm 13, notice that the psalmist changes from a psalm of despair to remembering God's steadfast love, remembering days of joy, and encouraging us to continue to sing unto the Lord. Those are just two examples. What I would encourage you, as part of our Lenten study, we've been trying to pray every day and read scripture every day. Combine the two. Read a psalm each day of the week. And you will find that often they will speak for you. And they truly teach us how to pray, especially during challenging times. To God be the glory. Uh, I wanted to share also, um, like you said, Jim, the psalms have been really impactful and I think there, I like the practice of let's read a psalm a day. 
Um, so Jen and I have prepared some reflection on Psalm 23, and I just wanted to share that I've, um, I've really taken to the practice of reading Psalms slowly, and uh, maybe I got that because they made us translate Psalms in seminary, and <laughs> oh, like that's reading slowly. So you look at the first three verses of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he makes me lie down in green pastures. And I read that again in the light of what's going on right now and realized that we are being made to lie down, a lot of us. Um, we're being made to stay home. We're being made to not go out. And for, for a lot of us, we're being made to lie down, but it's not in green pastures and the waters are not very still. Um, so I just want to encourage you, if the waters are raging around you, Remember that it's God who's making you lie down. Remember that it's God who's there. And the very next phrase is, he restores my soul. And that's what God is doing in the midst of this. There are a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of stress that, that is impacting us. But God is present in this stress to restore our souls, to give us peace, to give us true rest. I remember um, scheduling a conference on my calendar. I was going to go to this. I was going to use my continuing education time. I, I you know, made sure everything was taken care of um, at the church I was serving at the time. And the goal of this conference was to listen for God's voice. We spent time in silence. We spent time in meditation. We spent time on small group discussion. And it was not a full schedule. And I went into that stressed, like this is scheduled time, and I came out of that with a sense of God's peace, because no matter what I brought to it, I was opening myself to the possibility, and God responded by giving me peace in uh, what could have been a scheduled and stressful time. So I hope that um, if you're, you're watching this, that you find that way to invite God's rest into your life. A few things have resonated with me, and one is that this is a time for us to potentially start new habits that we otherwise don't have time for. It's very easy to concentrate on the things we're missing out on, like being together today. But there are opportunities to grow in ways that potentially we don't normally take time for. So the idea of reading a psalm slowly, we spent time um, with the children during the Lent service two weeks ago um, making a journal for gratitude. And I encourage them to write down things that they're thankful for. We all can do that, whether you start your day with that to begin with a uplifting uh, outlook or if you end your day to peace, find peace in your heart. Uh, the other thing that we did with the children was we looked at Psalm 23 and we read it slowly. And we read it slowly twice. And as they heard the words, the children drew pictures. And each one of them found a different piece of the psalm that resonated with them that they were able to then talk about. And that's another way to interact with scripture. Um, the other things we do, we can act them out. And I thought today... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> all okay. If you're able, please join us. <laughs> I have a easy to read, hopefully easy to understand, version of Psalm 23. So if you're looking for it. Yeah, let's all give right. us a shot. Let's do it. <laughs> The Lord, Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. I have all that I need. <laughs> God, God lets, lets me rest, rest in green meadows. He leads me beside the still water. The peaceful street. Different kind Got it. <laughs> God renews <laughs> my strength. He guides me along right paths. Bringing honor to God's name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. 
you, you prepare, prepare a feast for me in the front of my enemies. enemies. <laughs> <laughs> you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup is full and spilling over with blessings. Your goodness and unfailing love will be with me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the Lord's house Amen. 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 We pray that you will experience not only the joy of the Lord and the presence of the Lord, but God's peace. Stay well, everyone.